Good evening. Welcome to our worship tonight, the longest night service. This is a blue Christmas service because Christmas is not always a joyful time for everyone. Many of us are, are struggling at this time of year. Many of us are grieving. Many of us are hurting. And so this service honors that feeling that many of us have right now. It's a service of, of readings and of prayers, of um, some hymns that are, are appropriate to, to this service, to the feelings that we honor tonight. We'll be sing, singing selected verses to familiar hymns, but in this service you may notice some, uh, some different themes than you might typically. So please pay attention to the words as we sing tonight. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So with you. Gracious God, we acknowledge that this is a season of joy and celebration for many people as we remember the birth of Jesus. But we also acknowledge that these celebrations can ring hollow in our hearts if we have experienced grief, depression, or pain. We may not feel like joining in the celebration if we are walking in sadness or distress. There are many kinds of losses that trouble us in these days of darkness. God, we come to you in this Advent season with the pain growing inside us. As the nights have been growing longer, so has the darkness wrapped itself around our hearts. In this season of our longest nights, we offer to you the pain in our hearts the suffering that we may not be able to put into words. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort us in our afflictions. This is our longest night, Lord. Please be near us. Reach into our hearts, heal, and restore us. Where we are hurting, comfort us. And where we are experiencing sorrow, show us compassion. Bless us in the nights of grief, that we may see your light dawning upon us. God of mercy, hear our prayer for ourselves and for our families who live with painful thoughts and memories. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of your Christ, who shares our life in sorrow and joy, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. Let us sing, it came upon a midnight clear.
We hear now from the prophet Isaiah. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Amen. And now from Romans 8. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed for us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was suggested to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. And hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. In hopes we were saved, now hope is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But we, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searched the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give up everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Let it be so, Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Let it be so, Lord. Let us sing Away in a Manger.
This first candle we light to remember those persons whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in ours. Please take a moment to remember those who have died. Lord, each of us takes our loved one by the hand and leads them to you, the God of love. Here we present them to you. Accept our thanksgiving as we entrust them to your loving care. We want our loved ones to be free at home with you. We ask that you save a place for us beside them. We ask that you fill us with purpose and strength in the days ahead when we feel like giving up. Remind us often of our true homeland where we are caught up in the desolation of the journey. Help us to find joy in the people, the events, and the beauty of nature which surrounds us. Thank you for the gift each of these people has been in our lives. We want to believe that we'll celebrate the treasure of love with them again when we, will all, when we are all in your presence forever. May this, this truth sustain us in the days to come. Take our sad and aching hearts and comfort us, for we often feel hollowness and emptiness. God of sorrowing, draw near. Amen. The second candle we light to redeem the pain of loss. Whether the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs with the security they bring, the loss of health in ourselves or in family members, the loss of joy and peace in our lives from the stresses that surround us, or the loss and loneliness we experience when our loved ones do not share our faith. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to God, asking that into our open hands God will place the gift of peace. 
Now please take a moment to remember our losses as we light the second candle. God of mystery, we turn our hearts to you. We come before you in need of peace, grateful for the mystery of life, and ever keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. Teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the changes which we are going now going through. Amen. And now we sing, What Child Is This? candle we light for the loss of direction in our lives, whether we've lost a dream, a cause, or a purpose. We find ourselves adrift, alone, lost in a terrifying world. We look to God for a star in the night of life that pierces the darkness and points us to God. Please take a moment to reflect on the darkness as we light the third candle.
God of the Exodus. You led Moses and your people through the wilderness to a new land. Hear our prayer. We want so much to have a sense of direction, to know where we are and where we ought to be headed, but the darkness and the questions stay. You ask us to be full of faith, to believe deep within that you are our signpost, that you are our wisdom and our guide, and to trust in your presence. Your words to us are clear. Do not fear. I go before you. God of our depths, we cry out to you to be our guide. Grant us the reassurance of knowing that we are on the right path. Take our lives and use them according to your will. Take all that is lost in us and bring it home to you. Amen. This fourth candle we light as a sign of hope. The hope that the Christmas story offers to us. We remember that God who shares our life promises us a place and a time of no more pain and suffering. Please take a moment to reflect on the hope of the child who was born at Christmas as we light this fourth candle. O oh God, whose spirit is known by those whose hearts are thankful and who makes cheerfulness a companion of strength, lift up our hearts, we pray, to a joyous confidence in your care. Guide us when we cannot see the way. Teach us to know that a shadow is only a shadow because the light of eternal goodness shines beyond the object of our fears. Where there is love in life, teach us to find it. Help us to trust it and enable us to grow in it. So may our lives bring comfort and encouragement to others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, whose life is our light. Amen. Now we sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let us pray. In the spirit of this season, 
Let us now confidently ask our God for the good things we need for ourselves as we try to participate in Christmas, coping with our many losses. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For any person we have loved who has died, for all the losses we know in our lives, that we, that all may be redeemed by your promise of new life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For our families and friends, that you may bless them with love and peace and joy. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For our refuge and strength, that you may continue to bless us with the help and support of our families and friends. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, as proclaimed by the Christmas angels on that faraway hillside. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of your people. Grant to all, especially these bereaved and troubled ones this Christmas, the blessing we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would like to invite you now to find a candle at home, uh, and we'll be using that in just a minute after our song. So uh, during the song, you want to find a candle and uh, prepare it. Thank you. of us comes bearing our own hurts, sorrows, broken places. I want to invite each person to offer their personal wound to the God who loves each of us deeply and wants to carry our pain. God waits patiently, gently calling out, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. I will refresh you. I invite each of you, all of you at home, all of all who are gathered here, to light your own personal candle. As you light the candle, remember that it is God who lights a candle in us, in our darkness, 
and holds us close until we are able to shine. These lights are only symbols, but as they burn and finally go out, we remember that suffering passes, but memory remains forever. Let us sing Silent Night.
Unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is given. Gathered this day, we embrace and claim the darkness that is present both in the world and in our own lives. As people who are familiar with the darkness, we also know that we are illuminated and warm by the light of the Christ child this Christmas season. May the Christ child, born in a lowly stable, himself an outcast and marginalized, bring light, comfort, peace, and joy this holiday season. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived, suffered, and died for the sake of suffering and hurting people of every time and place, and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, who supports and encourages you, be with you now through the season of the longest night and forever. Amen. Amen.